At Right On Replicas, we take pride in providing you with the best scale model reviews on the planet. This review covers the new release of the 1954 Hudson Hornet Special from Mobius Models. This is kit number 1214 in the current catalog, and it's molded in 125th scale. While it's a new release, some tooling is shared with previous versions. The kit is a skill level 3 for moderate builders age 15 and up, and requires glue and paint. Inside you find some crisply molded parts in white, clear, red, and chrome with some vinyl tires and a metal axle. Now, there are water slide decals and some great instructions. Overall size when finished is 8 and a quarter in length. The width is 3 inch and it's about 2 and a quarter inches high. Here are the decals for this build. The quality is very high and the color registry is great. There's just a small carrier around each decal and they float easily and they'll set quickly. Quite often you'll find that it's preferable to use a setting solution to help move the decals and get them to conform to features on your model. Personally I've found uh, Microscale Industries uh, Microset and Microsol to be most compatible with the different manufacturers of decals. The motor is assembled first and it goes together in a couple of steps. First you assemble the block, the oil pan, the front, and the valve covers, and paint it red. Now paint the fan belt rubber color and the pulleys flat black and add that to the motor. The fan is black and added to the belt. On the right side of the motor, the crankcase vent tube is painted flat black and added there. Then the exhaust manifolds are painted steel and added. The intake manifold is a gun metal and added and then the carbs are gold and added to the intake. The fuel pump is in an aluminum and installed as well. On the left side of the motor, the throttle linkage post is steel and installed. Paint the starter black and put that on. The oil filter canister is a steel color and install that. The distributor is tan with aluminum and the coil is black. Install those too. Paint the oil tube red with a black cap and install that and the generator is black and installed also. Now on to the top of the motor. You assemble the air cleaners top, bottom and cap and add decal number 8 to that. Note the instructions mislabel it decal 9. Paint the throttle linkage steel and install that then add the air cleaners. Now paint the exhaust steel and install that as well. The motor is complete now. And as you look at the video here, you can see the locations of all the components. But it really is a nicely detailed motor. Here you can see on the right side of the motor uh, a good uh, view of the exhaust, carbs, and fuel pump. Again, nice detail. Now you can put the wheel assembly together by simply inserting the rims into the tires. The tires aren't directional, so it doesn't matter which rim they go on. And if you want to give your tire a uh, like street-used look, then press and roll the tread on a grit of uh, 220 uh, sandpaper and this will rough up the surface and make it look like a, a used tire. Now start the suspension uh, by installing the backing plates and spindles to the front tires and assembling the rear axle pieces together. Um, the, uh, the spindle, the brake plate, and the, and the pin go together and they're painted a satin black. The rear axle is assembled and the brake plates there are installed and it's painted satin black also. Then install the tires onto the pins on the front spindle units. Here are the sub-assemblies after you've assembled and painted them. The chassis and interior is next. Paint the interior pan the color you want your interior to be and tape it off to paint the underside flat black. The frame is satin black and paint these parts as follows. The A-arms are satin black, the springs are flat black with steel outer coils, the sway bar is satin black, and the tie rod is aluminum with flat black linkages. The master cylinder is steel colored, and so is the drive shaft. And the exhaust is steel with aluminum muffler, mufflers. Uh, the upper cross member is satin black, and the leaf springs are satin black. The shocks are red, and the rear sway bar is black. On the front end, install the springs, tires with the spindles, and the sway bar and the A-arm, as well as the tie rod. The cross member is installed 
on the interior pan. The drive shaft and exhaust are then sandwiched into the middle of the frame and pan as they are installed. Now add the master cylinder. Slide the metal axle into the rear axle and add the tires and wheels. Install the axle onto the frame with the sway bar and add the leaf springs and shocks. Also, line up the drive shaft into the differential there. Here is a close up of the completed front suspension. This is the completed rear suspension. Notice the different tones in the shocks on the floor pan and also the position of the shocks. I added some flocking material here to give the interior a nice touch. You simply paint the floor pan the color that you want of carpeting. Then you spread a thin layer of Elmer's glue on it. Sprinkle on some of the flocking, let it set, and then dump off the excess. It's an inexpensive touch, but it really makes it look nice after it's finished. Now gather the parts needed to assemble the interior. The color scheme on the Hornet Special was a two-tone, so in this case I picked tan on a nutmeg color. Just assemble the seats and paint the interior the lighter color. Then once it's dry, you tape off the pleated areas of the seats and the door panels. That will remain a light color. Then on the back of the front seats, the pockets are taped off also. Uh, the grab bars are a light color and aluminum, and the pedals are flat black. Now you can install the pedals onto the floor pan, and also having painted the exposed areas of the seats the darker color, you can install the grab handles onto the back of the front seat and place both seats into the interior pan. Now the interior trim side panels have silver knobs and trim and door handles and you can put those into place now too. I searched the internet for some images of floor mats applicable to my Hudson and this is what I found. I used a color inkjet printer to print them out on some black paper. Then I cut them out and placed them in front in the front seat area with some white glue. Now pull together all the pieces you need to put the dash panel together. The dash panel is painted nutmeg like the rest of the interior and detailed with aluminum and black knobs. The decals are used for the instrument panel, the radio and heater as well as the horn button. The heater is aluminum with flat black tubes added and the wheel is tan. Now install the wheel into the column. Paint the knobs on the end of the turn signal indicator and shift knob black and then install the dash into the interior and place the column in the dash and align it forward. Now we can gather the um, engine bay parts and we'll paint the firewall and the radiator hoses and horns uh, a matte black. We'll also assemble the motor and get it positioned to install. Now install the motor onto the motor mounts and align it with the drive shaft at the at transmission and then install the radiator and hoses to the frame and to the motor. Now add the horns to the firewall and the braces also and add the wiper motor to the firewall too. This is painted flat black and the two wiper mechanisms are steel and they're installed also. Next we'll start work on the body and don't forget the fuel filler door and the hood. Now check the body over completely for mold lines and blemishes. This body has at least five distinct parting lines that need some attention. Each fender, like front fenders here, have distinct parting line that needs to be removed and repaired. There are also uh, some parting lines on the rear deck and across the trunk right up at the top. Make sure that you use some 800 to 1000 grit paper and carefully sand and smooth those off. Now wash the car in a mild soap detergent solution and then Rinse it off with cool water. Let it air dry. Then thoroughly prime the car inside and out with good quality primer. Once it's cured, check again for blemishes and make sure that you fix those with some uh, fine sandpaper. Wash it again and prepare it for main color after air drying. Now make sure that your paint is com 
compatible with the primer you used and spray the body in some nice even thin coats building it up in layers until you get the color depth that you wanted. I used a green here that I had on hand as it seemed to be typical of the kind of color they used back on this model. Once the body is cured you can use some bare metal foil or if you want use some silver paint to complete the trim on the body. Use a brand new blade and your hobby knife and apply the foil to the trim areas and then use the blade along the guidelines to remove the excess. Now you can apply the body decals and most of the decals for this model are very small and probably won't require any but I like to use setting solution just to make sure they adhere and conform to anything underneath them. To get a thinner crisper crystal clear look to your glass we'll use some of this floor polish. Gather the parts for the interior and then dip the window glass into a vat or a bowl of some of the floor polish. Then let it wick off onto a paper towel until, until it dries. Make sure you cover the, the stuff up so that dust doesn't fall into it. Use some white glue to install the windows into the interior. The front and rear glass have a molding around them that needs to be foiled prior to installation however. And install the mirror and the light and paint the visors tan and add those as well to the ceiling. Now install the firewall at this time too. Now we can add the chassis to the body. Turn the body upside down and put it on something soft and then pull the sides out very carefully and slide the chassis, kind of wiggle it into place into the wheel wells. It should snap there without any need for glue. Now we'll gather the pieces for the front end assembly. Add the door handles, the side mirrors, the wipers and the antenna and with some white glue install the headlight lenses and put those in place. Now add the marker lights in the grill and install that. And add the bumper. Paint the battery black with steel posts and a green cap and install it. Now add the trim to the hood and just place it into position without glue on the body of the car. Here is the engine bay with all the decals and features that are prominent in it. It looks really nice completed. I decided to put an optional license plate on my car for personalization so I came across a logo and printed it out with a color printer and put it on some paper and covered it with a piece of clear white tape. I also gathered the rest of the rear bumper and rear fascia items to install onto the car at this time. Now add the tail light lenses to the bezels and install those as well. Then add the valence and the bumper and cut the tag out and glue it into place. There's only a few extra parts left in this kit that weren't used. There's some racing exhaust and you can just add those to your parts bin. Otherwise the build is complete. Overall this is a very impressive kit. It's one of the Hudson series and so the body shares some moldings and it's showing a few parting lines but they're nothing that's major and easily removed. Otherwise all the separate details like the interior panels, the separate engine pieces, even the separate frame and chassis make for superior detailing. There were no issues, it, everything fit tight, there was no warpage problems and the build went together real well. All the contact glue points are very positive. The chrome work looks great, and nice and crisp. If you want to see every review, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel.